Uh, as a minister of the gospel, I always start any interaction with prayer. Because I realized many years ago that unless God builds a house, we labor in vain to build it. Unless God keeps the city, the watchman watches in vain. So I come at everything in life at 77 years old from a spiritual perspective first and foremost. Because everything that we see in our world has a creation and a creator. Amen. So anything that we hear that originates from the hearts and minds of human beings have to be examined to determine if it's true or if it's a lie. If it is true, it'll always line up with scripture. Whether people believe that or not is irrelevant. And if it's a lie, it will contradict scripture. And God will always permit us because he's given us the power to make decisions and to choose. One thing, my brothers and sisters, that no devil in hell can take from us is the power to choose. The power to choose right or the power to choose wrong. The power to choose truth or the power to choose a lie. Amen? Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, help us now. As I walk through some scriptures on America's godly heritage, let us be mindful of the fact that unless the Lord builds the house, we labor in vain that build it. Unless the Lord keeps the city, the watchman watches in vain. Help us now, Lord. Be glorified. Let the people be edified. Let the tricks of the devil be nullified. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. First scripture, Psalm of David, chapter 11, verses 3, says, If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? That is a question. Someone will say, well, crap, red, what do you mean by the foundations? Everything starts in life with a foundation. In other words, from the bottom up, not from the top down. Hello. Amen. This building that we're in. They didn't build a roof and then build the foundation. It doesn't work that way. They build a foundation that is solid and cannot be moved. And then they build the structure going forward. That's why with the last presentation with Mrs. White, we heard that in reality, it's the people that build the states that build the feds, not vice versa. We got it twisted, everybody. Eh? If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? The foundations of the United States of America is the Judeo-Christian ethic. Whether people want to hear that or not. Hello, somebody. Amen. I'm going to just read to you a short commentary by, jo uh, I think his name is, yeah, Jodiah Morse, who invented the Morse Code. Listen to what he says. Our dangers are of two kinds those which affect our religion and those which affect our government. They are, however, so closely aligned that they cannot, with propriety, be separated. The foundations which support the interests of Christianity are also necessary to support a free and equal government like our own. A free and equal government. Jesus says in John chapter 8, verse 30, or 1 and 32, that if you continue in my word, Jesus says, then, it's an if-then proposition, are you my disciples indeed? And then you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. A lot of people say set you free. That's not what Jesus said. He said it will make you free. Red, what's the difference? Simple. Words are important. If I say set you free, let's take this little roll of tape. I can set it here and then decide I don't like it there. I'm going to move it over here. 
That's what's happening in America. When you said something, you can unsaid it and sit it someplace else. But when you make something, it can't be moved. Hello, somebody. Hey? Now, let me finish what he's what Moore says here. To the kindly influence of Christianity, we owe that degree of civil freedom and political and social happiness which mankind now enjoys in proportion as the genuine effects of Christianity are diminished in any nation either through unbelief or the corruption of its doctrines or the neglect of its institutions. Sound familiar y'all? In the same proportion will the people of that nation receive from the blessings of genuine freedom and approximate to themselves the miseries of complete despotism. That's exactly what we see happening in our nation today. To a key. And Moore said that way back uh, uh, in, eight, in, the, in, in the 17th century. I hold this to be a truth confirmed by experience, Moore says. If so, it follows that all efforts made to destroy the foundations of our holy religion ultimately will lead to the subversion also, listen to this, will lead to the subversion also of our political freedom and happiness. Ouch. Amen. He didn't say that yesterday, y'all. He said that many moons ago. Do we not see that that's exactly what's happening today? Amen. Huh? Let's go a little further with that, what Moore says. Whenever the pillars of Christianity shall be overthrown, our present Republican form of government and all the blessings which flow from them must fall with them. Ouch. That's some heavy stuff, y'all. The devil, through a wicked government that we have now, is determined to abolish the gospel of Jesus Christ, and as a result, everything is falling apart in America. But those of us who love God, those of us who love our country, taking a stand for righteousness sake and saying that the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? But we here in Tampa Constitution has made up our minds. That's why this ministry is so important that we will not, God help us, we will not let the foundations be destroyed. We will not lose our country to these atheistic, godless, un un ungodly people who want to promote this woke. They ain't woke, they dead. Right now, the old battleship of America is shaking. We're shaking because we've decided to, to, to mess up the foundations. Yes. But God has brought us together here in this place to recognize and understand that our greatness does not come from politics. Our greatness does not come from anything other than the gospel of Christ Jesus. And when we get back to the foundation, no devil in hell can move us. Yeah. Yeah. America's godly heritage, point two, is found again in, in the Psalms, chapter 33 this time, verses 12. And it says, blessed, not cursed, blessed. What, David, is the nation, uh-huh, whose God is the Lord. Uh-huh. Doesn't say blessed is the nation whose God is Buddha. Uh-huh. Doesn't say blessed is the nation whose God is Mohammed. Uh-huh. It doesn't say blessed is the nation whose God is Hare Hare Krishna. Uh-huh. Or Confucius. Or the Pope. Or any such thing. It says blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord Jesus Christ. End of subject. 
End of discussion. Oh, Rev, uh, don't you realize that we live in a pluralistic society with many different religious ideologies and blah, blah, bloop de bloop de bloop de blah, blah? <laughs> Guess what? That's our problem. Because either the Bible is right and all them other folks who disagree are wrong, or all them other folks is right and the Bible is wrong. Well, guess what? They both can't be right. Hello, somebody. As my mama taught me many, many years ago, there's a liar in the house somewhere. Uh -huh. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. The people he, who he, God, has chosen as his, as his own inheritance. What's that mean? Think about it, y'all. On, on F, of every nation in the world, everybody, and I mean everybody, wants to come to America. But yet, the narrative says America is systematically racist. America is full of them right wing deplorables, a basket of deplorables that are unredeemable because their skin is white and we got to get rid of them so them poor people of color can have a fair shot. Ooh. <laughs> Say what? Somebody need to talk to Reverend Crab up in here. People of color? What's that mean? Last time I checked, everybody's a person of color. Cause if you ain't got color, you a goat. Where we come up with this nonsense, people of color? What does that supposed to mean? Last time I checked, that last rascal that was in that communist in the White House named Barack Obama is biracial. Half of him is white and half was, 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 was black. So which color is he? <laughs> this messes me ridiculous. Talking about old pre um, Wednesday when I do CRT, you go really figure this stuff out. These people talking about oh, people of color are oppressed. Does Obama look like he oppressed? Which side of him is the oppressor and which side of him is the oppressed? That devil is a liar. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Why do you think everybody wants to come to America? Think about this. I saw a political cartoon just the other day. The political cartoon showed a picture of communism in a pit down low. And at the, on the top of the mountain was American communists burning the American flag and jumping down into communism. <laughs> And on the mountain, trying to climb up the mountain, was the Cubans scratching the corn to get out of communism with an American flag trying to get to America. Hello, somebody. Amen. Now, if America is so racist, if America is systematically racist because of white supremacy, whatever that means, then why everybody who hates America, why aren't they trying to get out of Dodge? I told some of them a couple years ago, you hate America and you an American citizen? I'll tell you what Rev will do for you. I'll buy you a one-way ticket to communist China or North Korea or, or Russia. Get out of Dodge quick, fast, and in a hurry. I ain't seen nobody take Rev up on that offering yet. Cause ain't nobody trying to leave America. Everybody's trying to get up in here. Yet America is evil and wicked and deplorable and beyond redemption. That devil is a double liar. You see how easy it is to discern truth from falsehood? Hey, it's not hard, y'all. But most people go for the okey doke. 
Most people just want to believe lies because the mainstream media says this is the way it is without examining and discerning and determining for oneself. That's why you heard Mrs. White say, research for yourself. Don't believe a thing Reverend Kraft says. Don't believe a thing Mr. Shirtlift says. Don't believe a thing Miss White says. Don't believe a thing any human being says. But have enough decency and sensibility to say, I'm going to examine this thing for myself to determine what's true and what's a bold-faced lie. Hello, somebody. <laughs> Blessed is the nation. Whose God is the Lord? The United States of America is a baby nation. Yet can any anybody say that America is not blessed? Can anybody say that people can come from the most oppressed nations? Look what's happening exactly as we speak in Cuba. That's going on right now. Where the precious people in Cuba who have been bound for generations under a wicked, oppressive communist nation. And they're holding the American flag in Cuba and saying, we got to get them out of here. We're only 90 miles from freedom. We got to get to America while wicked American citizens are, willing, are ready to jump into the very pit of communism. Brothers and sisters, deception is real. That's why Jesus said that if you continue in his word, what's his word? The scriptures. If you continue in my word, saith God, through Christ Jesus, then are you my disciples indeed. And then you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. The converse of that is if you don't stay in the scriptures, you won't know the truth, but you'll believe a lie and the truth will escape you and you'll go right into bondage. You will not be made free. Amen. Think about it. Every one of us in here, when Karen Constitution is over in a few days, you got to catch a vision. And the vision has got to be laid in the unchanging foundation that Jesus Christ is Lord. And it's the gospel of Jesus Christ that makes men and women free. And that's the reason why God has put in every human heart to crave freedom and liberty, not slavery and bondage. Hello, somebody. Hello. It's nonsense about America talking about, ah, this left wing, right wing, chicken wing, and all these wings. <laughs> it's just deception and distraction. Red and blue and purple. The devil has all kind of lies, and people are buying this mess. Talking about the red now is the good guys, and the blue is the bad guys. Well, guess what? Guess what's wrong with that kind of thinking? I'm 77 years old. Back in the 60s when I was coming up, the Reds were the bad guys, they were the communists, and the Blues, the true Blues, were the good guys. Now it's the, the script that's been flipped. So don't get caught up in this red-blue nonsense. Amen. Eh? Don't get caught up in this conservative-liberal nonsense. That's another false paradigm. Eh? Because if that was true, all, all this conservative liberal, if there really was a difference between any political party, Democrats or Republicans, you would see a total change in policy every election cycle. Do you, any of you, you see a, a change in policy? No, you know why? Because there are two sides to a same coin. They play off each other. Ain't no good Republicans and bad Democrats or good Democrats and bad Republicans. The Democrats think the Republicans are the bad guys. The Republicans think the Democrats are the bad guys. They both wicked. Any political party that is not standing on the everlasting gospel is a bold-faced lie from the pits of hell. Amen. End of discussion. America's blessed. America's always been blessed. 
We're a baby nation, yet we became a superpower. How can you explain that except with the scriptures that I read you just said? Blessed, not cursed, blessed is the nation, that's us, whose God is the Lord. End of discussion. So don't listen to any other nonsense about what this country says or what this country thinks or blah, blah, bloop de blue. They're all liars. Next, America's godly heritage. What has happened to us? Now we jump over to Proverbs, which is the, the, the wisdom scriptures. Who wrote the Proverbs? Who wrote the Proverbs was the greatest statesman on planet Earth. Not only was the wisest statesman, he also was the richest statesman. He was the king, King Solomon, son of David. He was the master statesman. He was not a preacher. Solomon, guess what Solomon said in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34. He says, righteousness, righteousness, righteousness exalts, exalts means to go higher, a nation, but, that's a conjunction. Here's the opposite. Sin is a reproach to any people. Uh-oh. There's that choice factor again. Proverbs 14.34 says, if you're right and you're walking in righteousness, if you're right and you're walking in godliness, you will be exalted. But if you're wicked, and evil and full of sin you're going to be reproached look at what's happening to our great nation today y'all we are being reproached with this snake and this usurper and this viper that's now occupying the White House we don't call him president you know why? because he's not He is a usurper. And when you watch him on television, he, he operates just like a snake. <laughs> Whispering. But when you stand for truth, when you stand for what's right, you don't. <laughs> As I look at that camera, as a minister of the gospel, I don't say, listen, you all. Oh. <laughs> I, I love Jesus. But don't tell nobody. <laughs> because I don't want to offend people who don't believe like I believe. That devil is a liar. Jesus, that cannot be moved, for he is the Alpha, he is the Omega, he is the beginning and so enough, he'll be the end. And one thing we'll all agree on, it is appointed unto everyone who wants to die, and after death the judgment. Baby cakes, you ain't gonna be here forever. We gonna find out who's telling the truth up in here, and who's lying. Hello, somebody. Amen. We can't be moved by all this nonsense going on in Washington. It's all a bunch of lies. Righteousness. King Solomon said, exalt a nation. But sin is a reproach to any people. Look at our nation now. Other nations in the world are laughing at us. Some of the nonsense we're putting up with. Same sex marriage. I put that in quotes. Ain't no such thing as that. 
every human being on planet earth had a male and a female. Hello somebody. I ain't seen two men make a baby yet. <laughs> and it never happened. And it never gonna happen. And this nonsense about gender identity. Oh, I'm gonna set it all out. I'm glad it's on camera, cause I want somebody to come and talk to me who don't agree with me. Yeah. Yeah. Gender identity, what kind of nonsense is that? Every human being on planet Earth is either male or female. Boom, end of story. Follow the science, they say. Great, follow the science. DNA says male and female. XX or XY. I'm following the science, Turkey. What are you following? Where do we get this nonsense? I can be a man on Monday, a woman on Tuesday, a little combination of both on Wednesday, and whatever on Thursday. That don't even make good sense. And people believe in this foolishness. Because sin, sin is the root problem, and sin is a spiritual issue. People can be that deceived that they don't know if they're male or female, something wrong with them. Stuff is crazy. And people act like they're scared to confront it. Every human being on planet Earth came through heterosexuality. And anything opposite of heterosexuality is a perversion. Yes. People talk about, oh, you straight, Madden Craft. But I'm gay, they say. No, you ain't gay, you're perverse. Because yes. what's the opposite of straight? Crooked. Yes. If you ain't straight, you crooked. I see, I get tired of people with all this nonsense. Yeah. And then people would want to rip crap. You, you can't tell, talk to people like that. Really? <laughs> then if I start compromising and believing a lie, I'm worse off than they are, because I know better and so do they in their heart. Amen. Yeah. 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 Anything, any ideology, ladies and gentlemen, that's put to you that you have not been able to prove from day one is a lie. It's a lie. It is a lie. All this newfound mess that comes down the pipe every couple of years, and people say, oh, oh, they said. Oh, two years later, oh, they said. Now they're talking about transhumanism. Gonna be half, half human and half machine. The mess does not stop. <laughs> when are people going to just stand up for what's true and what's obviously true? Mm -hmm. Huh? Yeah. Yep. Obviously true. Amen. This shedding of innocent blood nonsense that they call abortion, that's another lie. Yep. I told some so called pro aborts. Not too long ago, when me and Mr. Shirley was up in Maine, I said, this is strange that they want to talk about the, a, a woman's right to murder her own child. I said, I looked at that woman and I asked her one question. Your mama didn't believe in that, otherwise you wouldn't be here. Amen. Did your mama believe in killing you? Obviously not. Because you here. You born, but yet you got the audacity to tell somebody that's not born yet, who don't have a voice to speak for themselves, that they don't have a right to life, which is the first premise in the Constitution. Because without the right to life, nothing else matters. If you born dead, if you have a funeral before you have a birthday, guess what? But no person on planet Earth who believes in murder of the unborn 
was aborted. Not one. So what do we have to do? And this is what I'm important to everybody in here. Get a backbone. Get a spine. Stand up for what you know in your heart is right. Stop compromising and capitulating to this nonsense. Let us stop being a reproach and going along with the lies of the wicked. But let us stand for what we know is right. Because Solomon said, righteousness will exalt a nation but sin. But sin. But sin. The S-I-N word. The only thing on planet Earth, y'all, that is really systemic is sin. Do you hear that, Graham? Yeah. <laughs> Not no well, color of somebody's skin is systematic. When people talk about racism, racism is just one sin among millions of other sins. Yeah. Why set out racism? As the be all, know all. You know why? Because skin color cannot change. I've been black 77 years and won't turn white no time soon. So what the devil does through the communists is say, hey, we'll play the race card. See, I graduated from Harvard Divinity School with a master of divinity in the class of 96. They was pumping that mess then. But they didn't call it critical race theory then. They called it something else. They called it liberation theology and social justice. But it's the same lie, just repackaged. And I sat in those classes in that Marxist school, Harvard University, and, and, and had to study that mess. But it went in one ear and not the other, because I knew it was a lie then, it's a, it's a bigger lie now. Because back in the mid 90s, when I was at Harvard Divinity School, the three of facets of, uh, analy of uh, analyzation would always be race, that was always number one. Class, that was number two, and gender. They got rid of class for the simple reason that class is fluid, it's subjective. Somebody can be in the underclass one year, then get a job and go into the working class, and then get a better job and go into the middle class, and then hit the lottery or whatever and become millionaires, and then some become billionaires. Here's the question, y'all. I'm not picking on her, but I'll use her for an example since everybody's hip to her. Oprah Winfrey. Oprah Winfrey is a woman, obviously, and she's rich, and she's black. So, so, so according to CRT and all these crazy idiotic uh, uh, inventions, Oprah Winfrey is oppressed. <laughs> Hello, somebody. <laughs> She's oppressed as a woman. One strike against her. She's oppressed, too, because she's black. Two strikes. Uh huh. And she's also, uh, she's oppressed in every area. But at the same time, me and Mr. Sherliff was in Maine last week, and a dear friend who runs the, the uh, Salvation Army has to keep put white people who are homeless in a shelter. They white, they the oppressors. So you mean to tell me that them white people in the Salvation Army are oppressors and poor Oprah is oppressed? Give me some of Oprah, Oprah's oppression, y'all. Uh huh. See, it ain't hard to discern what's true and what's a lie. Once your purpose in your heart that I'm going to know the truth. I'm going to do what Jesus says in John chapter 8, verse 30 and 31. Now, if you continue in my words, say the Lord, then are you my disciples indeed, say the Lord. And then, then you will know the truth and the truth will make, make, make you free. For where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I got five more minutes and I'm out of your face. <laughs> One more passage. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 29, verse 2. Again, the Proverbs. King Solomon says, when the righteous are in authority, we're talking about politics, y'all, the people rejoice. Now here's the converse. But when the wicked man rules, the people groan. Ouch. 
There's always a contrast. Right now, the witness is in authority. But Reverend Kraft will add a little addendum to that. For a little while. The wicked in Washington, the wicked in all these state governments don't know that their house of cards is about to fall. Amen. They just don't know it. But what you see in the Bible that was written thousands of years ago through King Solomon said that when the righteous are in authority, people rejoice. When the wicked rule, the people mourn. Don't go around no more after camp wringing your hands about how bad it is in Washington right now. The reason why it's bad in Washington right now is because we put them rascals in there. And now their evil is so pronounced that they just, man, just stole the election. And while telling you that they didn't steal it, and people saying, half the people saying, oh, they didn't steal it. <laughs> you can't believe your lying eyes. Uh-huh. Hey? So here's Reverend Crass' pardon shot to all these. Get your Bibles out. Get off of CNN. Get off ABC. Get off of NBC. Get off Fox. Get off all that nonsense. Here's the answer. Get in your Bible. Lay a solid rock foundation. A foundation on the gospel of Christ Jesus that cannot be moved. Believe God. Call the devil what he is, a liar. Because the Bible says in John chapter 10, verse 10, Satan, the thief, only comes to steal, then kill, and then destroy. But then Jesus comes back in the same verse and says, But I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Amen? Amen. God bless you.